They say it's a tomb built for an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, but there are many who believe it's something else entirely, and I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. Let's get to it. According to the modern accepted theory, the Great Pyramid was constructed around 2500 BC as a tomb for this guy, the Pharaoh Khufu. However, there's a bit of a problem with this theory because it's based upon only three, yes, three, very controversial pieces of evidence. One, the ancient Greek historian Herodotus mentions Khufu as the builder of the pyramid within a document dated back to around 400 BC. But Herodotus isn't what you would call a credible source and it's mainly due to the fact that well, he lied a shit ton. Two, in 1837, British explorer Major General Richard Howard Weiss, after blasting the fuck out of the king's chamber, discovered the name Khufu written in workers' graffiti on a wall within the void above the chamber. But this discovery occurred during the last few months of Weiss's two-year expedition, which the British government funded to the tune of around $1.2 million, which in today's money would be around $31 million, and many, including his own colleagues, believe he faked it, because up until this point, he hadn't discovered a goddamn thing. Plus, there were some issues with the paint possibly being modern as well as the hieroglyphs being wrong. And three, this tiny little rectangle that sits within the king's chamber and the fact that it kinda looks like a coffin. But no sarcophagus has ever been found within the Great Pyramid and as far as coffins go, this ain't one of them. Which actually highlights, arguably, the biggest issue with the Great Pyramid being a tomb and it's the missing prayers because according to the Egyptologists, scholars, and well, every single history teacher I have ever had, the prayers from the Book of the Dead are the most critical feature of the tomb and an absolute must have for the Pharaoh because, as you can imagine, the underworld isn't the safest of places and making your way through it isn't really possible unless you have the prayers from the Book of the Dead which act as a guide map for the bearer so that they could safely navigate their way through the afterlife which is why every single ancient Egyptian tomb and coffin that has ever been discovered is covered in these prayers. So the fact that not a single one has ever been found within the Great Pyramid, the supposed grandest tomb of them all, poses a massive problem to the theory. And before you start typing away in the comment section that including the prayers within the tombs wasn't yet a thing during the time of Khufu, let me just save you the trouble and present to you Exhibit A, the Step Pyramid of Djoser, which is about 200 years older than the Great Pyramid and not only does it contain the prayers, but a sarcophagus as well. Oh, and also, the Great Pyramid is the only so-called tomb in which the burial chamber is not underground. Now, here's where things get interesting, because clearly, we've established there is a very real possibility that the Great Pyramid wasn't a tomb. So, what the fuck was it? Well, according to the Egyptians, it was a resurrection machine. And even though the scholars will tell you this is nothing more than a simple metaphor, the evidence that has been discovered inside suggests it absolutely wasn't. Let me explain. According to author and engineer Christopher Dunn, the Great Pyramid was actually a great power generator that when tuned correctly could have actually acted as a power plant, which at first, I know, sounds ridiculous, but that doesn't change the fact that it is a very real possibility because found within the Great Pyramid, more specifically, the shafts that connect to the Queen's Chamber, which, by the way, no one has ever been able to explain, scientists discovered traces of zinc and hydrochloric acid, which, fun fact, when mixed together produce hydrogen or combustion, bringing us to our next intriguing discovery which was found within the subterranean chamber where researchers uncovered evidence of water erosion and cavitation, which, according to maritime engineer John Cadman, are both signs of a hydraulic press. Combine that with the combustion taking place in the chamber above, along with the extreme high volume of quartz crystal embedded within the red granite that make up these chambers, and what do you get? An effect known as piezoelectricity, which occurs when the crystals begin to vibrate which in turn produces electro magnetic energy or electricity. And here's the thing, exploring the artifacts, the temples, tombs, and the ruins of ancient Egypt, we find numerous examples of what looks to be, well, you tell me. Now, Again, I totally understand why many would be hesitant to accept this theory, but despite its fantastic nature, it's not out of the realm of possibilities and frankly, if I'm being honest, is a much better fit. That being said, how this machine was actually used and for what purpose, that part I'm going to leave up for you to decide, so don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below and, while you're at it, do me a little favor and tickle the pickle with a like and a subscribe. As always, I appreciate you stopping by, I hope I got you thinking, and I'll see you on the next one.